Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking about a uh, classical myth slash fairy tale in contemporary films and I'm mainly going to be focusing on Pan's Labyrinth. I'm a very big fan of the movie. I actually have it. So using myth and turning it into a contemporary film is definitely something that is done. You know, you, you watch movies sometimes and you you see something and and you realize hey like i know where this is from like this has like an underlying something <laughs> i've seen before like i've seen this before this is something that is talked about um and it's because it's myth it's myth that is retold and retold and it's done in in creative ways and i think that guillermo del toro definitely breaks down some barriers when it comes to telling a myth so I want to get right into it so I hope you enjoy I'm gonna be talking about some elements of fairy tale that I saw throughout the film the first thing I wanted to bring up was the bug slash fairy thing that bug which turns into a fairy helps her find her escape and I think that this definitely falls into del Toro's interpretation of fairy tales in that they have to be simple you know she follows it and eventually it leads her to the fawn let's talk about the fawn fawns can be uh, either helpful or hurtful and at first honestly I kind of got the vibe that this fawn was evil just his overall demeanor seemed kind of evil like his his intentions didn't seem like he wanted to help Ophelia I thought like he he wants to hurt her which actually turned out to be the complete opposite he was not the bad guy in the film definitely not the bad guy was the captain Captain Vidal the fawn was out here looking out for Ophelia the fawn's character was made out to sound evil and kind of deceiving it was just another test of Ophelia's character to see if she was going to obey everything the fawn said or if she felt that she was gonna choose to do her own thing another element of a uh, fairy tale I wanted to talk about was the rules slash a prohibition the first big one I thought was, you know, the don't eat or drink anything. Essentially, when she does eat the grape, she has to pay for it, you know? There are consequences. The monster is gonna come alive and try to kill you. I definitely saw a parallel between the monster and the captain. You see the symbols of, of the pale man, like there's depictions of him eating children. And that's kind of what Captain Vidal does to Ophelia. He like eats away at her her innocence. He's trying to break her down. He's a terrible evil man. I kind of see a parallel, like a very strong parallelism between this movie and Christianity. So Ophelia dies. She sacrifices herself. I mean, she ends up in, uh, in a beautiful red and gold dress in a beautiful, you know, golden like scene, very godlike in the underworld. She's, she gets to be with her father. Just as Jesus Christ, when he sacrificed himself for his for our sins, he ends up with the Heavenly Father up in heaven. So this rule was given to Ophelia by the fawn. He said, listen, you cannot eat, you can't drink, anything. And this rule reminded me of the rule from Black Orpheus of don't look back. I wanted to talk about the consequences of what happens when you don't follow the rules. We all know what happened to Black Orpheus, you know. And in Pan's Labyrinth, when the rule was broken, she gets scolded by the fawn. He, he tells her, like, listen, you're going to age and die like a human and you're going to remain mortal. That's it. You broke the rules. I think it's interesting how in this particular fairy tale, Ophelia gets another chance later on in the film as opposed to in Black Orpheus when he isn't given another chance. But we know that she does go through a lot during the time that the fawn uh, kind of abandoned her. She sees the, the struggles of war. She sees her mother uh, sick and, and eventually dies. You know, she loses a lot of her innocence through all this. The next element I wanted to talk about was the labyrinth. We made a connection. Labyrinths are meant to trap out uh, ma malevolent beings. They're, they're meant to trap them. 
and I thought it was interesting how when Ophelia was running through the labyrinth with uh, her brother, her baby brother in her hands, the labyrinth actually opened and let her through and closed right before uh, Captain Vidal got to enter it. It just truly really shows that he is a male malevolent being and that he is you know, the monster, the real monster in this film. The whole labyrinth experience, her coming back to the labyrinth every time to meet with the with the fawn and eventually dying by the labyrinth, her blood spilling into it. The labyrinth in this movie is the path to God. She's sitting next to her father at the end. So the element of you catastrophe is very important in this film. You definitely see it at the end. The sorrow and grief that was felt by Mercedes when she finds Ophelia dead versus the joy that Ophelia is actually feeling, you know, because she finally made it. She made it. She's at the hands of her father. It's complete joy when she finds out that she actually passed the final test and that her choice was the right choice to make. Not to sacrifice her innocent brother, but to sacrifice herself. Another really important aspect that I wanted to talk about um, in this film was loss of innocence. So Ophelia, throughout the film, we definitely see her losing her innocence. Uh, towards the beginning, you know, she's reading the fairy tale book. Um, her mom is telling her, like, you're too old to be filling your head with this nonsense. She doesn't lose her love for the fairy tale world and for fairy tales themselves. The trials she's put through cause her to lose her innocence and the fact that she sees the, the blood coming out of her mom, you know. In the book of Crossroads, when the bloody image appears of uh, the ovaries and it kind of predicts her mom's uh, condition, you know, that definitely takes a toll on a child. I think another part of, of her losing her innocence was everybody always telling her, you know, fairy tales, like especially her mother telling her that um, fairy tales are nonsense and telling her that she needs to quit it, she needs to change. And her mother even throws away the, the root that was helping her that uh, Ophelia put under the bed. You know, she throws, she kills it and, um, and Ophelia kind of loses some innocence with that. Her mother died. She loses her mother. That definitely takes away some of her innocence. She intentionally poisons the captain because she knows that's what she has to do. You know, he's a terrible man. She wants to get him back for that and for all he's done. And the last part about losing her innocence was uh, the sacrifice. When the fawn asks her to sacrifice him, it's just a little pinprick, he says. It's just going to be a little pinprick and, and then she, she'll be able to go into the underworld she decides no you know like this is too much already so she chooses herself over her brother you know it's uh it's a self-sacrifice and this falls into the obedience versus choice is she gonna obey what the fawn says or is she gonna choose for herself and in this case she chose for herself <laughs> The soundtrack in the movie definitely fit with the whole fairy tale theme of it. The lullaby that is sung by Mercedes to Ophelia is very slow and it's it's kind of, it's very soothing, but it it definitely has some kind of fairy tale feel to it. And it also, you know, the sadness of it, it's beautiful. It's like this movie is like tragically beautiful because yes, Ophelia uh, dies. She ends up getting eternal life and immortality. I think that the set and uh, the color scheme in the movie in the film was very dark. Um, the only like really bright colors you would ever see was the blood which shows that there was a lot of bloodshed in this movie. The darkness definitely gives more to the meaning that this is a very terrible time in the real world. It is Civil War Spain in 1944 so i mean you're not gonna have a very bright colorful willy wonka and the chocolate factory set going on so the whole the darkness and and the fact that it was raining a lot and thundering and, and just dark there were clouds always you know i think that that aspect of the film adds to the fact that reality was very gruesome and very somber and Ophelia, all she wanted to do was escape this. So 
every time the fawn would appear to her, obviously she would, you know, she would be compelled to go closer to it and to do what it said, essentially, so she can get herself to the underworld where she belongs. Because she knew that there was something more to this and it wasn't, she wasn't just stuck and trapped in this terrible world terrible reality. Overall, I enjoyed both uh, Black Orpheus and Pan's Labyrinth, and I look forward to what other movies we're going to be watching in this class, and I feel like now every time I watch a movie, I'm analyzing it for myth and ritualism. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I look forward to seeing uh, some of your vlogs. <laughs>